Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about making your own custom slot cards, how you can do it, and the ways you can do it from the easiest to the most complicated, and the reasons why you may want to make your own custom slot cards. With the Carrera digital cards, there's a lot of European cards, and they're, they're great, if, but for the most part, I've never seen these cards. I'll never drive one of these cards. I'll never own one of these cars, and I guess there is an appeal to that, but I, I like um, older American cars, so there there are some available, but not a lot. And some of the European cars do actually look pretty cool. Any car with shark teeth, it, it's got a thumbs up in my opinion. But for the most part, I'm not familiar with them. This is kind of what the average American is familiar with. You know, a car like this, classic American car. And sometimes we kind of fix them up a little bit and put some big tires on the back and put some air shocks on soup them up um, because you used to call it hot rodding back in the day nowadays everybody makes them all original some guys get a little carried away this guy with the Corvette yeah I don't know if I would have put the uh, dinosaur spikes or anything like that on it but uh, you, you can go through for so let's start with the simplest build you can do this is a pioneer car all I did was take a scotch bright and a little alcohol and rub the numbers off of it to make a street car then I put some lights in it um, and then I added a Carrera digital chip to it. It's it's very easy to do. The interior does interfere with the chip a little bit. You have to amputate the guy's lower legs. But with some lights in it, it, it turned into a really nice uh, Camaro street car. And it runs, it runs pretty well. The digital chip fits in right where the uh, door goes. You can buy a Carson chip, which I've never used, but I've seen them advertised. I just use Carrera digital chips because I have some extra ones. I just invert that screw that holds the door in, and I'll put the chip right in there, run some wires. I'll, I'll just talk more about the wires later. So that's the easiest thing to do. The second easiest thing to do is just to repurpose an existing car. So this is a, a Chevelle NASCAR image that I found online and um, bought some decals to match it and repainted the, the existing um, Carrera Chevelle and did a wheel swap with it. A pretty pretty easy build. All it costs is a set of decals off eBay, a um, little can of spray paint, and just like that, you have a, a repurposed car. So that's probably the second easiest thing to do because the chassis and everything works. The third is to just buy a 132nd scale model kit. And these are getting hard to find because not a lot of companies make them. We'll talk more about that later. And then you can build it into a pretty simple... Um, car if you find a chassis that matches the wheelbase the Mustang has the shares the same wheelbase as this Mustang shares the same wheelbase as this and Carrera makes the 67 Mustang which is a good donor chassis you can make quite a few out of it um, this car here is actually on a Willys chassis with uh, Carrera car of tomorrow NASCAR wheels and I just wanted to have this because it was a 132nd scale kit makes a, a different little slot car it actually runs pretty decent so there are two things to uh, that will help you out when you're building your, your cars. Buy some of these tiny little lights. You can get them with the uh, wires already on if you're not comfortable with soldering. They're LED lights. They do, go, they do have a polarity. One post is long, one post is short. You can wire them in sequence and wire them right up to the existing wires. And you can light all your cars up. I really like lighting my cars up. The other thing is um, these are homies. And they're really close to 132nd scale. They're like a soft PVC plastic, but they come pre-painted. They make kind of nice little passengers and drivers for in your car. So I pick these up on eBay when I get a chance to sort of work on it. Um, one thing that I run into a problem with is uh, you can really screw up your paint. So follow the directions on the can regarding um, timing between coats. If you wait too long between coats, this is what happens to me, and I've thrown away a lot of cars. Um, unfortunately so it, it was a painful lesson but just read the coat time between your paints you want to get the clear coat on before it's too late this is one of my cars that I built with a couple of homies in it and it is setting on a Plymouth 58 uh, Fury chassis I like lighting the cars up one of the things that I did was I made a few of my grills in clear so that they would light up like this one this entire grill is shot with clear plastic and painted around the outside just leaving the marker lights to show through 
So one of the things we're trying to do in the makerspace is to make a range of 132nd CL cars that you can build as street or race versions. The Cyclone was the first, and I've been spending an enormous amount of time getting more cars ready and trying to increase the quality. So hopefully you'll be seeing some well-known cars in, in, the, in the near future. Um, but we're, we're really trying to dial it in and, and make it so that they're nicer than what the Cyclone turned out. The Cyclone was an experiment. And I got plans for some really oddball cars, too. Um, so if you can get a 132nd scale model kit, that's great. This, the other thing that's kind of new is 3D printing. I have a couple 3D printers. I use them to print prototypes. And I've printed some slot car bodies. They're going to be heavier. It's really difficult. So this is, the, the to me, the most difficult level of build. It's messy. It's toxic. It costs a lot of money for the resin. You have multiple failed prints. And, you know, that resin is just wasted. So I think 3D printing, well, it's kind of the future. People talk about it. It's great. I would say it's the last resort. I mean, if there's a car you absolutely have to have and there's no other way to get it, then, then 3D print it. But it's, it's really a difficult thing to get a, a nice result. It takes a lot of work. This is a, an HOT Jet 3D print here. Um, and you can see the support materials have to be trimmed away. The, the resin can be very brittle. I bought some other resin that's supposed to be more flexible because I don't want my cars to shatter in the event of a crash. But uh, it's, it's really tricky. I mean, it, it takes a lot of uh, skill learning. Let's move up to the larger scale cars. Carrera also runs 124. And you can see the difference between a 124 on the bottom and a 125th on the top. These are both the Mopar. One's a Charger, one's a Roadrunner, but they're basically the same car. You don't think there's a big difference between 124 and 125, but there really is. And it creates a lot of problems. This is a 125th GTO that I made. Um, I found some wheels that actually fit inside there. But the problem I typically have is the wheels rub on the 125th scale cars. I can't get Carrera axles that fit inside. So I stick with 124. This shows a 124 radio controlled Challenger on the top and a 125th pre-painted model kit on the bottom that I got uh, at a hobby store for a couple of bucks. They, they sold a uh, Camaro Mustang and uh, Challenger pre-finished. So the, I actually got the one to work. This is my donor car of choice is the 124 Carrera bread van. I bought a, a case of these. Maybe I maybe bought 10 of these at one time because they were on sale markdown. So this chassis and, and donor car, it, it works for most of the builds that I'm using. So this is that pre-painted 125th scale Challenger. I did an axle swap with some hot rod axles. And it turned out pretty nice. Because the tires are low profile, they, they tend not to rub. So that, that one is, is on the track and it's running. Um, I'll, I'll show you how to adjust the wheelbase on the, on the bread vans. But this is the 124 radio controlled. I think the radio controlled cars are more robust. Um, so these are some of my bread van builds here. This is a bread van uh, with uh, Corvette axles in it. Uh, this is a bread van with standard bread van uh, wheels and axles in it. And this was um, it's a 124 kit, and it's it's a really good kit. I, I actually have a second one of these that I'm building also. I like I made the lights up in the back because I just like lights. This is an Otaki. 124 scale kit that actually came motorized that has a bread van chassis under it. The bread van chassis was close enough that I didn't even have to alter the wheelbase. Again, it did an axle swap putting uh, Corvette Grand Sport axles in it. You can buy the axles at Carrera slots, pretty reasonable. This is a uh, monogram model kit, again on a bread van, no wheelbase adjustment needed. Just swapped out the, uh, the wheel inserts to give me the, the wheels from the model kit. This is a bread van with a stretched wheelbase. Again, a 124 scale monogram model kit. And pulled the uh, wheel inserts out and put a set of um, resin inserts that I found off of eBay. So it, it's, it's not that difficult, but I mean, this is a slightly harder than uh, build. So here we have the 124 monograms. I'm building the series 1970 Trans Am racing series in 124 scale. I got maybe two of them or three of them done. It's kind of one of those long-term projects 
What you need to do is saw the chassis in half and lengthen the wheelbase to where you need it to be. And if you go to a hobby shop, you can buy square brass tubing and it will fit right in the little grooves in the chassis and you can adjust it out and then glue it and clamp it. I just put a lot of contact cement adhesive in there um, and clamp it and when it dries you have a pretty rigid um, and strong chassis that you can use and you can adjust the wheelbase. The other thing is a lot of the Carrera wheels you can pop the inserts out and then put in whatever insert you want from the model kit so you can get uh, different different uh, style wheels. This is actually some low profile tires off a car but I had it handy with the uh, inserts popped out. This is the the Mustang, the blue one, and it's got Magnum 500 rims that came with the model kit. I popped the uh, wire wheel insert off the bread van and put that in there and it, it looks like Magnum 500 wheels on that Mustang. And that Mustang has the um, the stretched bread van chassis. So that's the, what I've built with bread vans so far. And, and here you can see those wheels on the Mustang. And it's just different to give yourself a different type of car. My other favorite chassis donor is the Cheetah. And sadly, this is really hard to find now. I hope Carrera comes back with this. This year, they come out with the GT40, which would be a good chassis donor. This is a radio-controlled 124 Cobra that has the exact same wheelbase as the Cheetah. Extremely simple build. You don't have to paint it. I took the driver out of the Cheetah and popped him in there. Um, I used some of my bread van axles that were left over from some other swaps. And it, it's really a fast car. This thing flies. Um, and put some, put some uh, small lights in it. And then I put a number on the door and it's, it's ready to race. And one of the nice things that the 124 scale cars are tougher for the radio, I mean the radio control cars are tougher because they're designed for, for kids to beat around and smash into stuff. And it fits really well with the other cars of the era, and it just adds a little variety to the race set that, that we can use. Uh, a lot of times I just use a hot glue gun and glue the uh, body on. You know, this is not a lot of finesse that you need for these cars because they're going to get smashed around. And the, um, the hot glue kind of holds them in place. If I ever want to take the body off to work on it, I can just cut it with a razor and pop it back off. The, um, the Cobra that comes in this kit is a 124 Cobra. It does also share the same wheelbase as the Cheetah. It's just a little more fragile, but I built these two. They work pretty good. And one of the things about building these kits, if they're going to get beat around, um, it's just kind of the nature of things. It, there's my uh, Corvette that got smashed up underneath the underpass. So you put a lot of work into them and paint them up, and they, they, get, they get banged around and scratched up in... Uh, when they're when they're being used so just keep that in mind that your cars are going to be used just don't feel that you have to put like a you know a super perfect paint job on it here's a picture of yeah these cars got into a bit of a, a fender bender there um, at a vintage race I thought that was a pretty pretty tragic picture those guys all had a bad day and uh, this is a picture from a race that I was actually at I took uh, I saw this picture online this this guy took his classic uh, car and, and smashed it up. So, yeah, don't feel bad if you do a lot of work on a slot car and it gets, it gets banged up. At least you didn't have a day like these guys did with their classic cars. Here's another uh, Monogram 124 scale kit that is setting directly onto a Cheetah chassis. T same tires, wheels, axles, same wheelbase. No modification needed. And that makes a really nice slot car. It can go up against your... Um, you know, GT40s and cars of that era. So here's some projects that I'm working on that gave me some trouble. This Jaguar, uh, I really want an E-Type Jag to race in 124 scale. It is extremely narrow, and nothing I found would even come inside of the fenders. And it took me a lot of a lot of figuring. I mean, this sat on my shelf for about a year or two now. And I finally found this car and ordered the axles from Carrera Slots. Because the car just looked narrow, and I thought, I'll take a chance on it. And they are, um, the front ones fit just fine. The back ones, I had to pop the insert out and sand the outer part on and push the rim onto the axle just a little bit further, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. And it that is going to be uh, be the Jaguar. And here's a, another project I'm working on. This uh, 
Mercedes is going to be turned into that Mustang. That's a 124 scale Mustang radio control car. Really cheap. It's available on eBay. They got a couple different colors. The stripes and everything are already on it. And it's a pretty solid little, uh, little car body. So, all right. I hope you can get some ideas for how you can, uh, make your own custom slot cars. All right. Have fun, guys. Thanks.